All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, everybody, and welcome to your Wednesday night show and tell. This is your favorite half an hour of the week. Is ours, too. It's me, Lady Ada. With me, Mr. Lady Ada. I was going to blink a puppet and uh, all sorts of fun stuff, uh, machines and electronics here at the Ada Food Factory. And we're going to be hanging out for the next half an hour or so, listening to what people in the maker community are working on, whether it be scanning electron microscopes or Raspberry Pis or 3D printed robots or maybe something else that I haven't quite guessed. Uh, come on by, show us off. It doesn't have to be Adafruit parts. Anything you've been making, we'd love to see it, and you can show and tell all about it. Let's kick it off with Noah and Pedro, and then we'll uh, see who else shows up. Hi, Take folks. Away. So we wanted to put together a uh, sort of a Lego adapter for the Cricut board. So this is a sort of a two-piece design. We got the little studs that snap up here, and then the bottom. We have these tubes. You can snap uh, Lego pieces from either the bottom or the top. Uh, these uh, these bolts here kind of hold the two pieces together, so you don't need to glue them. There's no support uh, material required for it either, and you just got these standoffs. So you can kind of fit some stuff in here. So we got our faceplate. Now what do we do with it? What do you we do with it? A Lego Cricut Rover, of course. So we put some little bits in here. We got some TT motors. Uh, secured to the bottom there with our little 3D printed housing that also has uh, Lego studs on it. So we got a little dance sequence that we put together make code. So there it goes. Whoop. And you were telling me about this earlier. So this is, it's the Cricut with Circuit Playground Express running make code. And then you've just got adapters to make it work with all the Lego wheels and gears and uh, you said you had like some sort of uh, uh, third wheel that was also a Lego piece? That's right. This guy over here is a little caster. It's sort of an off-the-shelf part. They make some really nice mechanical parts, so everything that kind of works within the Lego system just will really fit here. Uh, and there's lots of room here for uh, for things like the battery. So you got the battery in between here. These big honking wheels are from our monster truck build that we put together. And um, this axle here is like custom made for uh to fit on the motor shaft here yeah we stock that and i was yeah. like go do something with this and then you did yeah but yeah it's, it's awesome because it just plugs right on yep here's how the wheel is secured there this is just kind of snap fitted in there so i could probably pop this out and just show you the little casing for it so there's our lego bit this one is two pieces you just kind of glue them together um because i didn't want to use support material but it fits really well to the point where i don't even need screws for it but we'll probably put some screw holes in there just to make it really, we want to do some off-roading. <laughs> Maybe we need to do that. Um, so these files are all open source and available to download and step and STLs and all that good stuff. Uh, we talked about it in this morning's show. And if anybody has some cool ideas, I think uh, we're going to do some, next we're going to do some servo stuff so we can maybe do some steering. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. Okay. What a great mix. I mean, we love Mindstorms, but it's kind of nice when you can do stuff Low cost and also write circuit Python code if you want, which yeah. is available for, for Mindstorms. And like there's RGB LEDs, which you don't get with Mindstorms. Everyone loves NeoPixels. That's right. A great cool. robot. All right, thanks so much. All right, Thank next you. up, let's check in with Adam. Adam, how is your how's your transistor bay going? Uh let's see, can you see me? Yeah. Cool. I'm on mobile, so it's everything's a bit weird. Uh it's been interesting. Uh so I'm actually working on a diff different microscope than you. I normally do. There you go. I'm back. I'm back. Yep. Me, your camera, forward cam. We can see some machines. Good forward cam. Cool. So uh, this, uh, let me get around front of the machine real quick. Uh, this right here, I've been on the show until twice at this one. This is the transmission electron microscope that I went to Santa Cruz to go pick up. Um, it's been running pretty dang well. Uh, it's a pretty powerful machine, able to get out a half million times magnification. It can do X-ray spectroscopy, all sorts of very interesting stuff. And I was just, yesterday, I was starting the final alignment procedure on it to put it into service uh, with the company who bought it. Um, and all of a sudden, the image on screen started to flicker quite a bit. Um, now, the image on screen is formed by a series of electromagnets that uh, shape and guide an electron beam down that big column there. Uh, so it uses uh, 120 kV out of this high-voltage power supply, sends it up the cable to the electron gun, forms the beam at the column, or forms the beam at the top of the column, and then sends it down the column. Um, and it uses the electron optic or the electromagnetic optics to shape and form the beam, send it through the sample, and then magnify the beam. Uh, those optics are driven by this transistor bay right here. Uh, yesterday, the beam started flickering quite a bit, which is an indication that you've got a failure back here, and then all of a sudden it went out completely. So I started doing some troubleshooting and found out that the 90-volt uh, power supply rail 
was putting out about three, four volts. So understandably, something was pretty terribly wrong at that point. Uh, started troubleshooting it and found a short in it. Now, getting this piece of hardware out from in the instrument um, is rather interesting. It's several layers deep. Uh, you got to go behind this panel. This is the vacuum control panel. Uh, through that, there's a whole nest of wiring that's usually covering this, and then you can pull this panel out. And you can see it's not exactly the uh, easiest thing to work inside of. It's been it's been completely rewired by someone in the past, and they didn't do a super awesome job at cable management, so it's really fun to try and figure out where anything goes. Uh, so to troubleshoot it, you have to start just desoldering a whole bunch of stuff until you can find out where the short is. So keep desoldering different parts of the 90 volt rail. So I've taken a lot of the 90 volt rail out of this thing until I found one wire that had the short on it. That one wire went to this uh, this bank of five transistors. It was connected with that bus bar, and then go transistor by transistor to figure out which ones failed. So in the end, it was uh, this little sucker right here. That's the one. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Uh, took days. To Fine, just the amount of time it takes to get into this thing and service it. Uh, yeah, so just I literally found this about 20 minutes before show and tell. So uh, I got to figure out how to get a replacement, get the thing back into service, and then get the scope back online. Uh, it's been a, I've been pretty much consistently, like, every reason I haven't been on show and tell is I've been working on this project um, pretty much every day since for about two months now. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a rather complicated machine compared to the SEM. It's a lot higher voltage, a lot higher power, a lot higher vacuums. So, like, to get the vacuum you need on it, you don't actually use a regular vacuum pump. You um, use this thing right here called an ion getter pump. And with this uh, 6,000 volt power supply, you ionize gas inside of it. And then this big black thing right here is a magnet. And this magnet slams the ions into all of the pumps. So the wall absorbs the individual ions of gas. So it's a, it's a pretty intense machine to get it to the point where you need it to function. So every, every, pretty much every system on it's fought me at some point. High voltage, lenses, <laughs> computer system, vacuum. But Well, you're doing great. Now. We're there with you in spirit. It's like a video game. Where there's a <laughs> different like boss level. It's like magnet ionizer <laughs> boss. Well, come keep coming back. Even, <laughs> yeah. even if it's just to show us um, open bays of machinery, you'll have to look at that yeah, stuff. Hang in there. Thanks, Adam, oh, yeah. hanging there. I've been trying for like a month to get, come on. I've just like been on the road going to get parts or going to Portland to work on another machine or something like that every single time. All good. So I'll like try to be on more frequently though. Time. All right. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go to Phil B, then we'll go to Reef, and then we'll go to VJ, and then we'll wrap up with uh, Matt. So okay. Phil B. Hey, yeah. see, quiet night. So uh, yeah. do you want to see some old computer crap? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I want to see. trivia. Yeah. A couple months ago, I showed off the the Tandy 100. Um, I forgot a, a bit of trivia on this one. It's said to be um, Bill Gates' last uh, software project at Microsoft. His last official project. Gotcha. Um, you know, he went on to CEO duties, uh, but apparently he would still contribute code on projects here and there. But this was like his last, like official, you know, hey, you're heading up this this code project on the 100. But what I wanted to show off, you know, I'm, I'm oh, so the theme is, you know, I'm working on a little computer collection. Um, they all have to fit in shadow boxes on the wall. So I like that one because it's thin. But uh, another one that I got recently, um, I'm, I'm not like especially nostalgic for the Apple II. We had them in school, but um, I just thought the, um, you know, the, uh, the frog design uh, design systems that they did, they called it the, the Snow White aesthetic. Yeah. Um, I just thought for the period, they were just beautifully designed machines and I wanted one for the collection. So this one is a, uh, a 2C plus, which um, it is, uh, I believe it is the last Apple II model that was introduced, not the last one that was that you know went away, but the last introduced. Um, it it um, it was not super popular, and a big a big uh, part of that was they switched to a three and a half inch drive on this machine, which is cool. Like business software people loved it, but all the games on yeah. the Apple II were on five and a quarter inch floppies and had like sector you know copy protection. And so that kind of caused problems because people like playing games on these. And uh, so it was not a very, very long lived system. I think it might have been under a year before they uh, knocked it off. Wow. Jeez. But uh, it, it's looking good. I cleaned it up and I'm going to find a, a shadow box that fits that. And that'll be my second uh, old computer going on the wall. Okay. Wow. That's a nice gallery. That is a really and there's there's machine. there's a ton of them. I like the constraint, which has has to fix in the fit in the shadow box. Because otherwise, you're gonna end up getting like cray workstations. Yeah, it's like, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this guy on the street has a back. It, it fits, fits in the living room, so that's a yeah. good constraint. 
And uh, I just, for, for mo it's more about the, the industrial design than any yeah. particular nostalgia for these machines. I just think some of them are really cool looking. So cool. what's Thank going you. on? All right. Thanks so much, Phil. Yeah. Okay. Next up, Reef. Reef. Hey, Reef. What's Hello. Up? This is Ranjeev. Uh, I had some updates on the uh, Reef Pi project. Um, mm -hmm. Last time I showed off some of the uh, things that we have already built. Uh, in last two months, we have developed the, the second module on this, and that is this. Mm. This is a dozing system. It has a Raspberry Pi Zero. It is powered by a 12-volt uh, power source, and then there's an LM2596 that converts a 5-volt five, five step down, which powers the Raspberry Pi. There's a Parmaproto board and an L293D chip that is powering both of these two peristaltic pump. These are 12 volt peristaltic from pump from uh, Adafruit. Uh, so the entire thing is pretty neat and it is housed in a plastic enclosure from UX cell. Uh, what it allows us to do, uh, the software was released, the software features was released uh, a few, few weeks before. And let me share my screen on the software things. Um, Is it visible now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the the, the software part of it. Uh, what it allows you to basically, uh, it allows you to schedule any of these dosing pump at a uh, periodic um, time interval. For example, at this uh, this particular pump would run every every day at seven o'clock morning for thirty seconds, and at uh, seven uh, speed PWM zero to hundred. Um, it also allows you to run it on demand. That means I can just go to the calibration module and I can say that run it at, say, 70% speed for 30, sec 30 seconds. And I can just hit it run. And then it will show it is running now. Cool. So this is allowed, uh, what it allows us to uh, keep some of the hard to keep corals that, re that are very calcium demanding. So when the calcium level drops, it automatically uh, slowly adds calcium supplement. It also allows us to stay longer outside home in vacation if the water level goes down and it can do certain things and we can control certain things. Like we can monitor the, the pH using pH probe and give the feedback to this peristaltic pump to adjust the pH level. Uh, this was the, uh, the software was released a couple of uh, weeks before. Um, uh, I was working on the hardware part of it, and now the hardware is complete. Probably we'll have uh, guides. While we publish the hardware stuff, we also released uh, some of the software uh, side, uh, some of the improvements on the lighting side of ReefPi, which is, uh, until now, we were uh, supporting only you know, uh, a fixed uh, uh, PWM value or a, a day cycle, uh, 12 hour, two or uh, 12 uh, ticks, two hour interval. Uh, we have upgraded a new profile and, and now it is also allows a diurnal, diurnal, which is a, a more like you provide a, a time series, like a time interval, so seven, morning 7 a.m. to evening, uh, say 5 p.m. And, and that's it, it will do a proper uh, ramp up, ramp down, this kind of cycle of uh, uh, lighting. Um, awesome. These are the these are the two new things that we have added. One on the software, another on the on the hardware side, on the Reefpipe project. Right. These use well, for happy fish. You've earned a sticker if you want one. Just email support at adafruit.com and we'll send you out one right away. Thank you. All right, beautiful project. Thank yeah. You, Reef. All right. Fish. Next up, VJ, and then Matt's gonna play us out. Hey, VJ. You see your hand? No, it's yeah. You um, see something. Um, your mic, VJ. Let me see. Do, do, do. Can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. But can see. I see like a kitchen. Uh, I think I there got you. It. Yep, there you go. All right, what you got? Okay, cool. All right, so I haven't been here in a while, but um, and I'm kind of just showing an updated project. Here, wait, let me turn this around for a sec. Uh, okay, so oh. I'm kind of showing my um, updated project, which was the Motorized Lazy Susan. And originally I had done it with uh, an Arduino and I had a row of LEDs that showed the direction and speed that it was going and mine I have taught myself a little bit of circuit um, Python and so now I have here, let me just take this off of here and switch back to the other camera and um, okay so now I have the um, feather M0 with circuit pi running circuit python and let me turn this thing on 
So, uh oh. Of course, it doesn't work now. That's live demos, but we believe sure. you. Oh, there. There it goes. Okay. So, oh, yeah. And it seems to work a lot better now. And let me, I um, actually, I changed my screen image. So, let me show you what it looks like on the screen. Uh, let's see. There, it should be there. I don't know why that's not showing up. Oh, wait. Well, I don't know what happened. Yeah, it's totally live demo thing. But, um, and so it's working. I changed the direction. Yes, it is working. I redid my servo too, and I have a much better mount for it um, that I made. Oh, wow. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that's a pretty beefy mount. Yeah, because the other one, the old one, well, I went through probably six or seven different types of mounts. But anyway, so, but it's working, it's working really good, actually. And I can change the speed and the direction. So my next step is I really want to add the um, the LED lighting um, indication of the speed and direction. Because I can't necessarily know what's going on by looking at the turntable So while I'm working. So um, if I... So I was thinking about either using um, a dot star, maybe, but I think I'd have to get the new M4, is it? Feather M4 to do that. I don't know. Or my other options are, um, you know, just a bar graph and or a thing of um, NeoPixels or maybe even a little Gemma or something. So I've got to, I'm, you know, I'm new to Circuit Playground, so I'm trying to figure it all out. And getting this to work alone was, was you know, hard enough. Thanks to Katni and Dave, uh, Dan, all the people that helped me on in Discord. But, um, yeah, so if I can figure out how to um, code it to show the, you know, the LEDs or uh, whatever I use for the direction and stuff, then... I will be, should be um, pretty good. Okay, well, congratulations. So, yeah, keep hacking away. You can either, you're, you're getting there. You can have a sticker now or you can yeah. save it for later. It's up to you. Yeah, well, um, I, maybe I should wait. Here, here's my old one, though. It's all curling up and stuff. All right, well, right. dealer's <laughs> choice. You can, uh, but uh, come back when the project's done, no matter what. Yeah, and, and keep sticking around Discord. Oh, like we'll, you know, we answer questions all the time and, and you know, all together you know, we, i use it a lot i love i love discord it's the best thing ever you know yeah. it's working out yeah and then you can help people too one day you will be yeah. the uh sensei and yeah. someone will be the grasshopper that's all right all right thanks vj i would love to do that all right thanks you guys thank all you all right and then matt's gonna play us out okay matt what you got all right uh i got a vt220 and i attached a raspberry pi uh Pi camera and some RS-232 adapter and some buttons. This yeah. is the uh, Discord live broadcast chat. That well, I cool. oh, is that they have the Discord like JS thing that you can kind of get there? Yeah. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yep. That's cool. And then um, I have a, a picture program. So it takes a picture with the Raspberry Pi uh, camera and then turns it into ASCII and puts it on the screen. So I just got to push the button. Oh, wrong button. <laughs> That's all right. The reboot Okay. Oh. Oh, neat. Oh. Oh. Ding. <laughs> oh, too funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. And then the last thing to uh, play us out was uh, I set it up as a music visualizer as well. Yay. Yay. ASCII is the best. <laughs> it took a while to tune the settings to make it look OK. Yeah. This oh, is this at is home great. in every nightclub I went to in the 90s. This is a stock stock issue. Very I mean, cool, man. I like that you had the Discord channel, and that's uh, yeah, Discord's funny. That's really cool. 
Outstanding. Okay, well, if you want to stick our email support at adafruit.com, it'll be uh, not an ASCII, but it'll uh, it'll still be valuable. You can put on the side of that BT220. Yeah. There's plenty of room on there. Absolutely. All right. All right. And that's our show and tell this week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. For every single week. Thank you, VJ. Thank you, Reeve. Thank you, Phil B. Thank you, no, Pedro. And thank you, Matt. Thanks, everybody. Yep. We're here uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time every Wednesday. And then right after this show, we do Ask an Engineer. So we'll be there in we'll a couple minutes. We'll be there in a couple minutes. And thank you for making this the best half an hour of our week every single week. We'll see everybody very soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.